In the business of cartoons, you're sometimes going to hear the word option. Well, today I'm going to explain that what that basically means is that this is definitely a maybe, but before I buy this, let's figure out the price. Stay tuned for the details. Hey there, welcome back to Surviving Animation, your guide to making it in the business of cartoons. My name is Eric Calderon, and in today's episode, we're talking about the option. Now, I have to clarify up front that I'm not a lawyer, I'm simply a professional who's been in the industry for a long time. So this word, like many other words in the entertainment legal vernacular, uh, gets used a lot, and we're also used to it, we know what it means, but if you're on the outside, or if you've never done it before, it might seem a little bit intimidating, so I'm here to help, hopefully, demystify what the term means, give you some basics and how to work with it, and ultimately help you decide whether or not you want to sign it with someone who offers it to you. So let's review from the top. So like I said, an option is someone saying to you, this is definitely is a maybe. So let's work out the price. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's start with this. When you get an option from someone, you are basically giving that party the exclusive chance to buy your work. So they're not buying your work. You're just giving them a period of time where they have an exclusive chance to buy your work. So that chance uh, requires a down payment. So once you and the party who you're working with kind of negotiate what the final value of your property is, whether that's $100,000 or a million dollars or $10 million, um, they have to pay a down payment against that full price. That can be $1, that can be up to 10%. um, Whatever it is, it is an actual transaction between you and that party that says, Uh, you know, I am giving you the option. On the other side, they're saying, I now have an option. Now, that option is actually not unlimited. It doesn't last forever. It's for a set amount of time. Um, So I've seen everything from three months, six months, a year, 18 months. I've seen options that renew, uh, you know, if you pay an additional fee a year later. So you're kind of generally feeding a little bit to this creator, this property owner, um, saying that, hey, we're not ready yet, but we're willing to pay a little bit more if you just give us a little more time. Uh, but, you know, in theory, it's it's not an unlimited option. So an option can also be for some of the rights or for all of the rights. So, for example, if you are a comic book artist and you want a producer or a company to make a cartoon based on your comic, but you don't want them to own the merchandise rights or the adaptation rights into live action movies or the video game rights, you can option just the slice of that property. Um, On the other hand, you could work with a large distributor or a um, a Disney or a Netflix or Nickelodeon. And in that case, they might say, hey, listen, we're going to option your property. And if we purchase it, we're purchasing the entire intellectual property, the whole copyright. So that will obviously be a larger amount of money, but you are hoping that a, a company of that size will then be able to make consumer products and films and features, and you'll be getting royalty checks off of everything they make, and it'll be good for everyone. But that would be a deal where uh, an option is the entire suite of rights. Um, when an option comes in, the paperwork itself can actually be very simple or can be comprehensive. Um, some options are as simple as, hey, listen, I like your property. I want to option it for one year. I'm going to pay you $5 against the purchase price of uh, $100. Um, you know, let's sign and we'll move from there. And that, that is legitimate. That is actually a, a fair option. And a lot of companies work under that structure. Now, there can be a comprehensive option, which uh, might say, hey, you know, listen, I am buying something from a showrunner. This person is a director. This person is also a writer. Um, this person wants to be the showrunner of the series. So that comprehensive option might have to include a uh, much more detailed language. So if that party decides to execute the option, that is, you know, pay the full price and then own the rights, they have to again guarantee that other person that they will direct every episode. They will write five of the 12 series scripts. They will, you know, get paid X amount as an executive producer. They'll get, um, you know, guarantee for a second and third cycle. They'll have their name at the very top as created by, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you know, options can be simple or comprehensive. So that is really the basics. That That's really about it for what an option is. Let's talk about the million dollar question. Should you sign an option if it comes to you? Here's some criteria that I think will help you. I like to think to myself, if I'm signing this option with someone, is it likely that they're going to succeed? Are they a likable party or person uh, in a very professional sense of working together? And uh, can that person or can they do what you can't? So let's talk about those in bullet points. Uh, in terms of whether or not something can be likely, uh, an easy way is to look at their track record. Uh, you know, does their track record reflect the probability of success? And let's also specifically talk about in terms of the genre of the IP that you have. So if you have a 
a teddy bear and you know that teddy bear can be a great preschool show do you want to sign with a producer who's done 15 shows already in that preschool marketplace or are you willing to take a chance on a live action director who wants to move into preschool animation for the first time because his daughter loves your teddy bear well those are extreme situations but again that's using track record as one of your determining factors of whether or not you should sign an option um another thing to think about is is the party you're dealing with, are they going to put an investment in to develop your property? You know, if they're not going to just flat out buy it and make a series now, what are they going to do to take it from point of interest and not wanting to pull the trigger the whole way to actually making the animated series? So that kind of investment could take a couple forms. You can put sweat equity into a property, which is your personal time. Someone could then, you know, develop with you, really help you personally write the Bible or, or you know, really put their effort into selling it around town, or are they going to put cash into it? You know, are they going to help you hire a writer, hire a director, um, create presentation materials, create artwork, do a full animatic or a pilot uh, to sell it out? So again, a big determining factor of whether you should shine is uh, whether you should sign is uh, are they going to invest into your property to develop it and to the point where it can sell? Um, you know, another thing to think about is, you know, do their styles and do their skills complement yours? So I am a producer, so I work with a production company. It's unlikely I will option something I own to another production company. I mean, we're the same type of sellers out there in the marketplace. But if you're out there and you're watching this channel and you're a an animator or you're a character designer or you're a sole director, maybe you don't have the, the machinery to take your idea and develop it and, and sell it and pitch it out to the world. Or maybe you're a producer who needs a writer or a writer who needs a director. So again, you know, complementary skill sets or why partnerships are formed or why people want to work together, a big determining factor of whether or not you want them to sign their option. So, you know, one of the other things that you should really consider when you sign an option with anyone is very simply, what are your other options? So if you sign an option with anyone, you are by default um, reducing the amount of options you have in the marketplace. You're basically giving it to one party, one person, and saying, I am trusting you for a period of time and for a small down payment to try to make this work. So if you have a lot of opportunities out there, a lot of options, maybe take a few of those meetings, maybe take a little bit of more of that into consideration before you let one party um, run with your work for a, a set amount of time. So, okay, one final thing I want to say, you know, when people talk about options or think about options, there's always these dollar signs over their head. It's all about this money that they're getting up front. Um, I think that's great. I totally understand that's a motivating factor, but I want you to remember that the cash is that party's bait to you. It's, it's, it's meant to bring you in and get them to uh, be able to have your copyright for a set amount of time to develop, but it also is a sign of their commitment. So think about it from their point of view. If they're gonna option your property and they're gonna put $10,000 up front, they are $10,000 in, so to say. So they're very motivated to um, work on your property to sell it to the marketplace. On the other hand, if they're only putting $1 in and they're not putting an investment in cash, I mean, in, in, in investment of time and, and effort, then maybe that's not a great partner because, you know, uh, there's not enough bait for you and there's not enough commitment for them. So anyway, I just want to make that point about the, the cash part of an option. So, okay, that is it for today. I hope that helped everyone understand a little bit more about what the basics of an option are. If you like this kind of material, please tell your friends and colleagues about it and also like and subscribe. I'm putting out videos at a little faster cadence now that we're all working from home under the current pandemic. Um, I hope this is valuable to you. Please ask me any question you like in the comment section. If you do reach out to me on LinkedIn, please ask me a public question because I'd like to share this information and your questions with as many people as possible. So, all right, that is it. Um, I'll post a video again very soon and uh, hang in there. I hope everyone's being well and I hope everyone's safe. Uh, thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.